Hi, this is Eric from Coffee Watercolor. So today's video is going to be something a little bit different. So I thought I'd share with you this book from, of uh, Joseph Bookvich's work. So I got this book uh, maybe about two, three weeks ago. So this is actually like a catalog. It's a very, very fancy catalog from this uh, museum in china where he had his solo show so the book itself is really really high quality there's a collection of his work in this book i got this i ordered it directly from joseph and his wife and he sent me so from australia so this book actually has his signature on it so to eric with thanks from z so that's his signature so the first thing I need to make it clear is that I cannot order the book for you. And the second thing I need to make clear is that I don't know how. Because when they still have the book, I contact them personally. So last thing I know is that the book is out, at least at their end. So if you ask me where do I get the book, if you ask me where can you get the book, I, I actually am, I don't know. So I think the only way is to contact the museum yourself and see if they can do international shipping directly from the museum. But aside from that, there's nothing else I can, I can really tell you. That being said, there's a lot of great work in this book. And reviewing other watercolor artists is not something that I do in this channel. But this is a pretty special book for me. And Joseph has always been uh, one of my most important mentor, I'll say. I went to his workshop once. And he is the reason I got into watercolor, obviously. So I think it's good to kind of go through his work a little bit. And I'll share with you what I know about his work. And maybe just to talk a little bit about how he composes work and what makes his work so good. So I'm just going to get started. I will hide my face. So not going to distract you with that and this is also kind of like a you know pre-recorded live session because i am not going to edit this video much so let's just get started okay so so the introduction and stuff i'm not gonna say too much about it uh, his early life He's born in Corosia. I mean, you can read all about his life online, so I'm not gonna go over it much. But one of the thing I do want you to, one of the thing I do want to bring it out is that, so here it is. So I enroll in an art course at Deakin University soon after our arrival, and I completed a diploma in industrial design graduated 1974 at the time of dream to become a car designer so that's something that i want to bring it out specifically because joseph does have a very strong fundamental skill what i mean by that is that he was once a industrial designer and if you know anything about industrial designer is that their drawing skill are usually pretty good they can do freehand drawing but draw everything very structurally three-dimensional and they're really good with perspective and things like that so that's joseph's background he has a degree in industrial designer now of course he is a full-time watercolor artist now i don't know if he ever do any car design but he does have that fundamental drawing skill so this is something that i want to bring out over and over again because it's that this is something very very important that's why when he's doing things like um like a like a building or a car that we will see he does it very very well and he's able to bring out those structure his drawing skill is very good okay so he's a lily pond one of his classic and he does this quite a lot he this is actually not this specific one but he did a a similar 
same similar painting in one of his DVD. So he's known for his sense of atmosphere, at least for me, he's master of doing atmosphere. So this is very abstract, this is very soft, but as we come to the foreground, you can see he's starting to put in some more distinct shape, more solid shape, and so on. And that's how he established the depths of a painting. So from background, which is very soft and faded back, not to the foreground with a lot of solid uh, structural shape. Okay, so this is a great painting. This is one of the larger painting that he does. It's a beautiful lion head. This is called the Guardian of Venice. So if you look at this painting, I often talk about connecting shape and shape design. So look at all this. Okay, if you kind of squint your eyes, this whole statue in the foreground that connects into a single shape along with the foreground shadow here. And then that's the first shape you see, this contrast, this big negative and positive shade. That's the first thing you see. And then it leads you into the figures, which are the details of the painting. And I, yeah, that's him. He put himself in painting and then the background. You see how simple his background is. Well, it is very well done. This face off into the atmosphere and all the shapes are wonderful and beautiful. You do see how simple that is, which is the background. You don't see hundred of windows to paint out because that's just, just the background. Joseph, one of the Joseph thing about Joseph's painting is that he understand the roles that every element in the painting, how they play their role and how they work together into a good painting. So again, when you look at this, that's a foreground and the middle ground with more delicate detail and the people and then the background. So that's how we create depths. So similar things here, some stuff in the foreground that connects to the shape. There's two figures here. There's something that give you a scale reference and also kind of help it to become a little bit more relatable. And then into the background. If you look at the background mountains, well, there might be just distant hills. They are very soft and fade back. So I'll try to go through all the works, but I'm not going to stop and talk about every single one of it because there's a lot. There's a lot, a lot of works. So the first few ones, I will spend a little bit more time talking about that. Okay, so he's also known for painting the horse race. It's one of the, he loves horse. It's probably one of the animals that he paint over and over again. So if you look at all this horse, you can see the structural that he's a very, very, he understand the structure of the horse anatomy. Okay, especially the head, you can really see that this pops out in the two dimensional space and the, and the helmet of the rider and the gesture of the figure. He is really good with that. But if you look down here, he make those pretty much just lose those details. This makes the horse feet feels like they are moving, but at the same time, it kind of blends into the atmosphere. So when this happens, you focus on the horse head and the rider a lot more. And in terms of the shape design, you see this major horse, this two foreground horses, they kind of connect together along with the foreground shadow here. So that's all these riders, they are one single shape. And then we have another rider that's a little bit into the background, but not exactly in the you know far background, but probably like a middle ground. And that becomes a balance of this because if you just take that out, the whole painting is just going to be very heavy on this side. So he put a rider there with a pretty strong silhouette to give it a balance. 
So while there's you, your eyes still kind of traveled here, you got the balance here. Okay, so this is one of his uh, rural painting, and again, just a very very good treatment for the depths, which is something that he's known for. And he always makes this easy and when you look at it a lot of it looks really simple but again it's all about visual languages this little short stroke you read that as people and then the house the barn they are all very very beautiful shape and that's one thing that makes joseph's painting really special to me because he is his sense his sensibility of painting different shapes is wonderfully is really really wonderful because he able to design a shape that looks great so i think that also has to do with his background as an industrial designer because when you are industrial designer when you're designing things like cars uh, gadgets whatever furniture shapes become a very important thing the, the thing you design need to have a very strong and readable shape and it should look very elegant so i think that part of him definitely bring him you know take take it over into his painting okay so yera valley is something that he painted very very often so this is when I go to his workshop. This is one of the. This is the first painting that he painted. Not this exact one, but you know, something very similar. So very very soft faded background. Let me actually use a pencil instead of my finger. It's too big. So look at those faded background. So he did a wash. A few wet on wet. Look at those hinted trees wet onto wet details and as it comes down he start to connect the trees and make the tree bigger and a little bit more a little bit more solid and as it comes down more we see pretty much the focus of the painting which is this barn and he's also really good at using a scale like how small these cows are and as it comes forward cow become bigger and more defined okay. these are all very very beautifully done and when it comes to the foreground he has this wonderful tree to just frame the whole painting with that tree so this is something that he is really good at and if you look at the foreground all these little textures and details he pretty much do those wet onto wet he splash the waters and maybe he'll scrap scrub a little bit well not scrub he will uh, how do you how do you say he'll scratch a little bit with his fingernails so that creates those dry dry grass effect and then harbor thing is also something he does a lot I don't know if he would come up with that, but he is has a very distinct way of painting water that after him a lot of artists paint the same way because this the way he treated the water it just makes it so alive and moving and also very, very simple. So when it comes to visual language, Joseph is definitely one of the the best watercolor artists out there that treats visual language, he come up with visual language that is so Kind of widely used that people start to look look at other people's painting and start to think of you know think of him and me myself when i'm when, when i'm painting things like these i also painted the way he paints once because that's again i had a video about visual language that's how you learn first you copy other artists visual language and eventually hopefully you will develop something your own but when you start learning visual language copying what other artists do is a very good way to to learn about their visual language so look at how the ripple goes and when he does the reflection see if you look at this in real life you will probably see like the white part of the boat and such but he neglect all of that he just painted it into a solid shape and he have a little bit of wet onto wet treatment here but it works it works like the simplicity of that it just works it just makes it looks like beautiful reflection and ripples 
and you can feel like the ripple is actually moving so that's the power of his visual language and then of course the background how he treat the background very soft very fade back so the whole painting has a lot of depths okay of course the rainy street scenery is probably one of his uh, trademark like i saw not this one specifically but i saw his rainy street scenery in the beginning and that's how i got into watercolor because i just i was amazed by how loose he paint but yet there's so much believability and, and realism in it so so if we look at this painting Aside from all the technique and stuff, let's look at the shape he designed, the background, the dome, and the background buildings, and that connects to the left building and this car. So all this building, all these cars, it all connects, including this little figure right here, they all connect into a single shape. So the white windshield here, which he claimed that he came up with the white windshield, and the white windshield here and here and the little bit of side highlight here this one these are bringing out the contrast and the depths of the painting so if you just kind of squint your eyes you see this one big major shape that's very very easy to read a very distinctive shape but as you look into the detail you start to separate those shape within that major shape so we got our major shape we got our sort of a minor shape and then we got this little detail shapes okay so the good painting is good major shape good minor shape and some fine details that enhance the whole experience okay sailboat same thing very nicely very beautiful and again his visual language on the ripple very simple yet looking believable okay so another one of those uh, rural painting i also did something similar in uh, in the workshop painting some hay bale and stuff of course these are more of his finished work so they're bigger and there's a little bit more detail but the ideas are pretty much the same you know just big major shape and the figures for the scale and a lot of those wonderful wet onto wet effect okay. and this is probably another Yarra Valley painting you can take a look a little bit closer just the depths he's able to bring out is amazing. The sense of scale in this painting. I'll talk a little bit more about the scale in one of his late one of his painting later. But look at that gradation. Just this one on, wet on wet from light to dark. That very soft, clean gradation. It's not always easy to do those. I mean, even though it looks easy, but you know it's not always that easy to do okay so another of those field painting and this uh, is called paris paris in summer so again big nice major shape and we got our you know secondary minor shapes and within that minor shape is the details Okay, so let me zoom it in a little bit of detail and if you look at those those are very simple brush strokes but the reason why joseph's work looks so good is again that he's the shape he's able to paint out it's very delicate very elegant and beautiful all this little brush stroke there are a lot of mileage behind those okay. And those red, yellow, he probably does that in the first or second wash, and he just let those color bleed out. And his cars, like his cars are so wonderfully painted. His experience as an industrial designer probably contribute to that because many artists paint card, but very few paint as good as he is. And 
It's very silly thing, very sometimes just something very minor, maybe just the proportion and the ratio of the windshield and the body of the car, and maybe a certain stroke and angle, or whatever. But he's able to always able to capture it so nicely, so perfectly. Okay, another field painting. And again, his sense of shape, how he paint all these trees, so loose yet beautiful. It's like calligraphies. Okay, look at all this thin, beautiful brushstroke. Those are the things that we want. We want to learn from from him, because a lot of time when I see student painting trees, they are all the same thickness. All the branches are same thickness, and all the leaves looking the same. And I sometimes make that mistake myself, but he painted this very, very elegantly. We got bigger shape, and thinner or thicker lines, and all of these create some wonderful looking trees. Okay, so again another Venice. He has this very tall orientation ratio painting. Let's look at the major shape. The left building connects to the ripple. There's very few, very fine detail, dark detail that kind of separate that. But if you just look at it at a glance, this is one single shape. And the foreground dark connects to the shadow of the boat. And the back of the boat right here was the silhouette of the person and another building so again the shape design and if you zoom it in a little bit you got this major shape and it brings over to this person that this person okay, this person this roar connect to the building so is this so they are part of the major shape but they also stand out so it's a very very great visual language and design This is probably my favorite painting. It looks very, very simple, but I just love the, the quietness of this painting. Like, you know, this is probably my, my personal favorite of, uh, of the whole book and might seem pretty odd because how simple it is. But this talks, this says all about watercolor to me. The wonderful gradation in this, in this painting, just, gradation so clean and beautiful and that's the the thing that all the watercolor artists is striving for at least I am like every single time when I'm doing a, a painting to have this kind of beautiful gradation is like a dream okay and you can probably already do that at one go so maybe the first wash or second wash or whatever it is but if you have this light to dark or it's just a very subtle color change gradation those are just so such such a beautiful thing to behold and another thing is that he has this boat guy here so actually in his description I did a number of sketches of this scene while having breakfast, but they never looked complete unless I put that roller in. I guess he gave it scale, that the feeling of relax and stillness. So this is a point that he's trying to make. This roar gives a sense of scale. And scale is something that a good picture has. So I my day job is a video game artist and a lot of time and I'm doing a sci-fi game and doing a distant vista and background environment so a lot of time one of the things that keep coming up is the sense of scale and if you look at some movies especially some really great cinematographer movie so something like Blade Runner the, the newest one um, the cinematographer is Roger Deacon. A lot of the images are very, very beautifully shot. And you see this little figure 
walking in front of huge structure in the background and that little figure there gives the sense of scale how big and how vast the scenery is so the same thing is applying here this roar is very small okay if you just look at the you know the detail of this painting okay and it's very simple just you know one two three maybe three you know couple brush strokes but this long roarer gives such a scale to this scenery okay and if you go to the background okay also see those cows and stuff this also gives the sense of scale so when you look at the backgrounds and all the list little highlights of the rooftop those um, suggestive detail you really see the sense of scale in this painting the painting again very very simple but i really love how he treated like everything so yeah i spend extra time on this okay so another wonderful street scenery okay so this is a uh, gui yang this is one of uh, his plein air painting in china he did quite a few paintings in china very very nice okay look at all this beautiful little shape that he painted and another paris painting and again big major shape the building and the foreground shadow and this little haze separate this building and the background building okay. and then this car again the white windshield that he came up with apparently this brings out as a contrast a like a negative shape in this huge positive shape so again his shape his sense of shape design is just very very wonderful okay this is a fun one he paint two scenery he paint the same scenery twice doing plein air this is sunset this is uh this is morning so aside from the different lightings the painting looks very very similar okay again big major shape here we also have a big major shape with this one kind of have a little bit more going on and he loves bird every time he paints sceneries there's always like bird flying in the sky he called those um he called them space maker because when you paint those like the sky start to look have a lot more space and a lot more depth okay okay spain same thing nice big shape and this is uh, San Francisco. So the perspective in this one is very tricky because San Francisco has a lot of this road that's just going up very steep. But aside from those, again, look at his design, his bigger shape design. Okay, if you don't think about perspective or anything, you see this major shape and you see this shadow connects to this side of the shadow so it kind of give you like this uh, opposite L shape but with a little bit of twist okay so if there's nothing connects to the other side just like these okay this painting will probably not look as interesting as it is right now okay another San Francisco plein air wonderful and the friends and again shape connection he loves to just lose the bottom and connect that to the water surface okay. because he knows those are the background and the focus you were probably going to see is the person on the boat some more Paris painting and another field painting 
I'll go over this a little bit faster because we start to see the same subject. Small negative shape that brings out the contrast in the depths. Okay, same thing here. This is something he does a lot. And also many artists try to do the same thing as well. Is that he loses the bottom of it. So you don't see the wheel, you don't see the bumper. You just lose that connect to the foreground shadow. Okay see the fluidity of the watercolors you just merge all this into the big shape okay so again every time i say connect the shape this is exactly what i mean just connect the shape into a big major shape you can separate them by a little hint of detail like these and maybe look at the tail light and stuff Another Paris painting, very nice. Okay, and then another harbor painting. Joseph is really keen on having a good foreground. So he said that in his workshop in mo multiple times in other scenario as well. He said that you need to, you want to have enough foreground to lead the viewer's eyes into the scenery see this is all part of the foreground the shadow okay so, and one third of the painting almost about one third of the painting you start to see figures and car and stuff then you start to see the background and other details and so on so having a good amount of foreground is something he's really keen to do so look at the same thing here okay big major foreground here as well okay if this painting got cut something like this okay it might still work but then you kind of immediately introduce with all these little details but with the foreground you kind of have a lead way into the scenery so whether you like it or not, he's very keen on doing that. And I do think there's some value, um, you know, that's a very valuable tip that helps to design your picture and having a good composition. Okay. Uh, Italy and Melbourne, I think this is, as he said, this is around his house. So again, subject can be everywhere good subject can be everywhere just walk out of your house maybe around a the corner there's a good subject okay raining day new york another one of those beautiful beautiful painting and if you look at let's look at the details look at how paint how he paint those taxis just very very beautiful okay wonderful form and if you notice something that he usually paint his car at this angle he doesn't really paint a lot of the side of the car i think he find out that this angle of the car is the most dynamic and the shape looks the best so he usually choose to paint the car in this angle so a little bit like mostly frontal but a little bit of the side okay and like even his figure just looks so good look at the gestures he's not keen he doesn't really like to paint the feet he said it before he want to make the figure look like they're walking so they us he usually lose the feet okay. Okay. just look at the depths of the painting and the atmosphere and of course the reflection of the car I have one of the video that I'm painting like a foggy morning with less raining and there's some reflection and stuff. And I remember one of the comment I got is like the person is saying that what is with watercolor artists doing West Street and misty scenery? Probably because of him. See, so, you know, we a lot of us introduce into watercolor because of Joseph's work. So we kind of feel like, you know, that's our that's our first stop trying to do like a you know, foggy scenery with wet reflection because it just looks so good. Okay. 
Another China painting looks really really good, nice and loose. Okay, another harbor painting. Okay, and uh, some boat painting. I'm just gonna go through it a little bit faster because we're just only halfway through. Okay, so some horse painting. And it's another painting in China, Guiyang. And if you look at, okay, if you look at this shape, let me move my camera. Okay. I bet there's a lot of detail in this building in real life. A lot, a lot of details. But he painted as a single solid shape. With a little bit of treatment, he probably splashed some waters on it and so on. But if you just look at this, there's just not a lot of details. A lot of perceived detail, a lot of suggestive detail. Where he leaves the little things highlight here and there. The, you know, the Chinese red lamp hanging there, things like that. Because you know those are just part of the big major shape. Okay, the boat and the figure and you see the figure just gives a sense of scale the overall scale and the depths of the painting so it's a very simple painting big major shape and there's a minor shape here and the depths just soft edge hard edge light dark and the big shape building connects to the ripple ripple connects to the shadow of the boat so everything is here that's how he composed his painting and he also does a lot of his cafe paintings he does this whole series of that before okay he's also really good at painting people as well even though he doesn't really do much portrait uh, always like you know, how he paint the paris stud and stuff really cool Okay, so now the street sceneries. I mean, by now, like, this is why when you look at his painting, you immediately know it's him. You don't need to look at the his signature because his visual language are so distinct. And the way he designed a picture is almost become, you know, the part of his identity. Okay, I'm pretty sure you see something similar from him as well. The big background with almost no detail, just that. But that just push it back into the atmosphere. So when you paint the boat and stuff, this pops forward. Okay, but also that shape, it turns a little bit darker and connect to the foreground boat and the building and of course the darker foreground ripple connects them okay and then this high aerial view of paris look how much atmosphere he's introducing here just look at those faint soft details in the background and as it moves forward things become more clear and then we start to see a lot of little positive shape as the figures. Okay. The painting looks very sophisticated, but there's a lot of detail loose here. Again, sense of scale. I mean, this farmers here makes this tall haystack really, really big. Okay, and another beautiful painting here i love this just big washes clean simplistic painting if you look at again the very big part is the foreground that leads you into the painting like these and you start to see some more details and so on you see this figure here also introduce the scale and then the background look at just that misty background with couple 
little details here, soft shape here, but it suggests so much in this area. That's very not not a lot of details. It's very loosely painted. Little detail that suggests so much, but the overall shape as well. Get that O shape, and that connects to this two major shape here was one being a little bit darker because it's a little bit closer to us. It's just a wonderfully composed picture. Again, his trees beautifully painted. Just look at that beautiful trees. The one of the reasons I love his work so much is just the, you know, his paint his shape is so delicate and beautiful that color gradation is simply beautiful i don't know i'm sucker with simple paintings i think yeah but just that beautiful gradation there's something every art watercolor art is trying to strive for just that natural color transition value transition okay again another big major shape design so hopefully by looking at his work i can let you you know you can remember what i've been saying in my in my paintings like shape connection shape design you know, visual language, how to paint with different brushstroke, don't keep repeating brushstroke. Those are not from me, those are something other masters just they they mastered those. So another lily pad. Some planar painting. His skies are usually very simple. Like he, he once said that sky is like the eye of a portrait to the watercolor. So you know, if you make the sky too dark, it loses that light, it loses that transparent quality of watercolor. I'm just gonna go through this works. So besides a very tall, narrow format, he he also do those long, almost kind of cinematic looking ratios. And this is the one in a cover. Okay, very nicely painted. Tall building of the background, and then there's more details and stuff. And look at all this just shapes. They're just like random shapes, but they build into something that you can you feel like you can identify. Oh, there's stores, there maybe flag, and just sign signage and stuff. And maybe there's some people in there. It doesn't matter, but you know that those details are part of the tree. And the figures cars and this figure connects to the foreground shadow all the elements are there okay. Okay, I'm just gonna flip through those I'm not, not going to keep repeating what I say Such a good book, such a good collection of his works. It's really well paint printed too. Like the print quality is really, really good. So I think by now you can start to see 
the pattern of his work, right? if you can recognize what makes his work work and what makes these painting Joseph's work, big major shape, positive, big major positive shape, negative shape that brings out contrast, sound like a broken record now, okay, nice foreground leads to the focus of the painting. I mean, sometimes he doesn't have long foreground. Maybe he doesn't think this picture is needed. So it's not like a hard set rule. Okay. He does plein air a lot. That's something that he does a lot. And I, you know, I feel like I need to do more plein air if that's all possible. It's a little bit hard for me though. And especially in this time. Okay, he's got that river. Very nicely done. Very beautiful. Okay, he's doing some quick sketch of the racehorse. It's like the ability of able to capture the, sorry for the camera focus shifting, but just the ability to capture the structure and the gesture of the figure, like the horse, the gesture of the horse and how you know, the riders and just everything, like, you know, if you feel like the horse is moving, where he lose the detail and everything. He's a master for a reason. Oops. He does quite a bit of those chef painting as well. The guy in the background is very loose, very fade back. The guy in the middle ground, the foreground, they talking and he has a little bit more detail. I love the nose here. I love the red nose. See like the, if you, when you see like the nose that's a little bit redder, it just projects out. That's why a lot of artists, including myself, when we do portrait, we usually make the nose a little bit redder, a little bit darker. Let's actually just project the nose out. Some more horse painting. I actually haven't painted uh, in Joseph's way for quite a while. I try to, I try to, I'm not gonna say move on, it's really hard to just move on from that. But I try to do something a little bit different. That's why I start to paint things like uh, Andy Evenson, which is also another artist that I really, really like. But you know, I think Joseph's work always have a special place in, in our heart. Okay, studies. He does a lot of small sketches and studies. And this is probably a smaller size study of the painting he did in the beginning of the book. So here, this is like the finished painting. This is the study, okay? It looks almost the same if you just look at the big shape, okay? The only thing is that this one is bigger and with a lot more detail. I like them both. He's also, he's also probably one of the first artists that does uh, does the airport scenery, airplane and stuff, which is also another reason I did an airplane airport scenery before. Okay, so yeah, these are some other sketches. He does sketchbook a lot, okay. 
And I think as an artist, you do a lot of sketches to keep your drawing skills sharpened. Yeah, he does people quite a bit. And if you look at this small sketch here, it's all there. Okay. His sense of shape. And even though he's not painting, you can totally see this become a painting, like how he designed the shape, how he connects the shape and stuff as well. Just lots of wonderful sketches. He actually sketches some peoples. It's also just Big major shape. Oops, sorry. See how all this shape connected. Okay, to the foreground. So all his thought process are in this, uh, are in his sketches also. I mean, you can just see how much he likes to draw, how much he likes to paint. He just, he just keep doing it wherever he's going. That's how he gets so good. He just do it everywhere. Hopefully you like this uh, very special video. And I hope you enjoy reading, going through Joseph's work with me. And you can definitely tell that his influence on me and I, especially for my earlier paintings when I'm doing a lot of just street sceneries, even the airplane scenery and oh, just a lot of the big scale scenery that I did. And definitely a lot of influence from him. And even though I'm trying to try different style now, I still keep a lot of a lot of uh, his painting in mind that when I'm doing it, I still think about the things that he he taught us. Let the watercolor paint itself. You know, let the subject choose you and choose a subject that speaks to you, and just you know really have that nice foreground and everything shape design. Everything is all there. So again, hopefully, this is you know insightful for you. And I will see you guys again next week. Bye.